Let me tell you what's out there. Vast reaches of wilderness. Untamed. A rugged domain. Majestic. But lethal. It belongs to them. The machines. The steel beasts who rule these lands. And guard the secrets buried beneath its crumbling ruins. If you hunt these wilds, no matter how skilled you are, no matter how clever, you will become the hunted. Can you brave that challenge? Can you pass that test? If you want to survive, you have to make the kill. Only then can you bring to light the deep secrets of the Earth. David, thank you for uh, oh, my pleasure. this interview. I hope you're enjoying this week. Yeah, it's really nice. It's, it's, it was some kind of a surprise to be able, and I think the general public feels that, to be able to watch it in person, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is one of the most anticipated games. Do you feel, are you happy that finally the, the game is, is coming to the general public outside the big venues? Sure. Yeah, it's a um, really nice change from 2015 when we showed it, you know, we, we brought it in a playable form to E3 and, and to a bunch of different places around the world. Um, but it wasn't at a point where we could let people put their hands on it. You know, it was a, a demo that, that we ran and, and we, we showed to people. And that was fun, but it's been really nice this year to be able to put the controller in people's hands and, and let them play with some of the game systems. We've, we've got a, a small little sandbox that we've set up for them to play with. Um, and overall, the response has been very positive and uh, it's very gratifying to, to get some validation from people that the, um, the the basic actions of, of playing the game, controlling the character, and, and moving around and fighting um, are really resonating with people, and that makes us feel really good and feel like we're on the right track. Something really, really curious about your decision, or your move to build and develop Horizon, it's the diameter uh, difference of tone between watching the, the franchise you created, Killzone, yeah. Which is a different, completely different setting, and how bold artistically and creativity it was to move to Horizon. Yeah, how was the inside decision to change everything? Well, see, that's that was the whole idea. The, the whole idea was what happens next after Killzone, and so a bunch of games were, were pitched inside the studio. A bunch of different ideas were discussed, and and some of them went pretty far. I've seen some demos for some of the games that uh, were in development. And, and there were some good ideas, but the studio was most excited about the Horizon pitch, the, the concept of taking these machines and uh, putting them up against primitive humans and doing it in, in a very vibrant and colorful and, and rich world. Um, uh, JB, our art director, has said that um, Killzone is a pretty game, but it's pretty in a gritty way. You know, it's it's dark and it's gray, um, and it's it's good at what it does. But the studio wanted to move in a different direction and say we have the ability to do a lot artistically, a lot technically. What if we applied it in a very different way? So, is it risky? Absolutely. Has it been challenging? Of course it has. Changing genres this dramatically and going in such a, a different direction um, has, has presented a lot of challenges, but it's also exciting and interesting and uh, we're very happy with where the game is and, and 
we're excited about what we're going to be able to show to people early next year. You're talking about technically uh, who visits this book in speaking will notice that Horizon looks really amazing technically and artistically. And this is what we're watching. It's in the, the PS4, not the PS4 Pro. That's correct. So will there be any optimization to the PS4 Pro? Because this looks awesome. Yeah. How can we imagine it on the, the next console? Well, we've shown it on the, on the Pro um, at the reveal event for the Pro and uh, a few times since then. Um, one of the key differences is the Pro and, and Horizon will support HDR um, and there's there's some uh, some textures that have been in, increased in quality for the Pro. Um, but, but really, in terms of gameplay, in terms of the content that you have available, they'll be identical between the two versions. What do you guys feel inside was your standards for what you're trying to, to do since you're changing genre? Mm -hmm. which, which were your inspirations and your we want to achieve this or more? Well, Horizon is kind of a difficult game to categorize because it doesn't fit neatly into uh, genres. We call it an action RPG because it is. You know, it's, it's a strong action game. It's got strong role-playing elements to it. Um, but one of the things that has been really exciting about working on this game is we get to figure out what is the best solution to the problems presented by this game specifically. Um, and of course, we're all avid gamers. We've played everything collectively, uh, not individually, but collectively. Um, and so we're able to draw inspiration from lots and lots of different places, from, uh, from Tomb Raider, from Uncharted, um, from uh, uh, just every open world game that you can think of. We've, we've talked about it, we've looked at it, um, but this is a game that has a challenging and interesting premise, and so that has let us kind of walk our own path and, and figure out what's the best implementation of the type of content that we're trying to make for this game. It was uh, um, not difficult, but uh, a strong decision uh, internally the, the building of the protagonist. What were you aiming with uh, the, the construction of this protagonist? Well, so I, I think one of the themes that the studio talks about a lot is um, the, the difference between uh, one thing and another in the game. So we have the machines, they're very powerful, they're technologically advanced, and then we have the tribes in this world that are relatively primitive. And so you've got this big delta, this big gap between those two groups. And so um, the humans are at a disadvantage. And so they're going to have to use something other than brute force. They don't have power armor. They don't have uh, large uh, uh, large guns that they, they're so shooting. The disadvantage at, at the beginning. If right. You compare, yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of balance. Right. So the things that they have, the things that humans have, is our, our intellect. And, uh, and so what we, what we set out to do with Aloy is to say, okay, what if we had a character that needed to be smart? What if we had a character that needed to be agile? What if we had a character that needed to be uh, tactical? And what would that look like? And from the very, very beginning, the vision has always been a female protagonist. And I, I think it's because this is, I mean, all video games are to a certain extent fantastic. You know, uh, if you really break it down, they're not super realistic, yeah. right? So if you're going to do something fantastic, anyone can be can be your hero and so for us uh, Aloy represents the perfect embodiment of the smart tactical and agile fighter that is going to stand a chance against these overwhelmingly powerful machines she's able to figure out how to attack them how to mitigate their strengths increase her own strengths and attack their weaknesses and win it's, it's, so what happened the actual game and the, the, the flow of the creativity led to this character and not like we need to do a female right. protagonist. Yeah. yeah. Something also curious, it, it, it looks like if you think about uh, Xenoblade, for example, Horizon looks the opposite. You try to use the more, techno the more advanced technology possible mm -hmm. to defeat animals. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> here you're doing the opposite. Right. You're trying to use almost primitive-like um, weapons yeah. against machines. Yeah. But I think that the thing that's fun for us is looking at ways that the, the people of this world 
take that technology. You know, they're they're uh, killing the machines and they're they're taking the technology from the machines and they're repurposing it and they're using it against the machines or to make their own lives better. So you see Aloy, she, her armor, you know, she's got metal plates that have been taken from machines. Uh, her bow is composed of machine parts. Um, the uh, the ammo that she fires is a little bit more technologically advanced than it otherwise would be because they're exposed to this technology. They don't have a mastery of it, but they're able to use it to a certain extent to kind of turn the tables back on the machines. How hard was for writers to keep the suspension of disbelief on this kind of setting in the environment? So our lead writer John Gonzalez has, has talked about this at length and. Um, it was very important for everyone that the story makes sense. And um, we're not going to get into a lot of the details about that right now. We're going to keep it for, uh, for when the game comes out. But um, it was absolutely... It's a great challenge. It's a great challenge, but I think that we've succeeded. You know, when, when I look at the story as it exists, by the time you get to the end of it, you understand how this world came to be, how it fits together, and uh, although it may seem fantastic at the outset, it may seem unlikely at the outset, uh, we feel that there's a story, a strong story there, that really builds a world, builds a history, that leads inevitably to the situation that you see in Horizon. Because if you imagine an elevator pitch of yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn, I think uh, if you say, okay, it's a uh, primitive human or tribes who are trying to defeat powerful machines. Right. I believe who listens to this gets both excited and like, the how. Right. Yeah. So that I believe it's uh, one of the greatest challenges we've got because everyone is checking that artistically it's well conceived. Suspension of disbelief, I believe, will be the main um, the main point about reviewing uh, sure. Horizon. Right. Well, you know, we look forward to uh, early next year when you guys get your hands on it. But uh, like I said, we've worked very, very hard on that. Uh, spent a lot of time on the, uh, the the history of that, and it's it's really one of the main thrusts of what you'll be doing when you're doing the main story of the game is delving into that mystery of of how did it get to be that the world is like this, and and what is Aloy's core relationship to this? How does she fit into this greater narrative? So I know it's too early to ask, but Will this be a franchise? Well, so we've, we've talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, our uh, studio director, Herman Holst, has, uh, has fielded this question in the past. Uh, and I'll echo what he said, that what we're focused on right now, more than anything else, more than DLC, more than sequels, more than franchise, is making this game as good as it can be, so that when it comes out, then we can start to think about whether there's something beyond it. Because if we don't succeed in making something that is, is worthwhile with Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, then it doesn't really make sense to, to talk, talk about those other things. Okay. David, thank you for interviewing. My pleasure. Hope you enjoy and good luck with Horizon's release. Thank you. Thank you.